Former five-star recruit, USC quarterback and Georgia quarterback, JT Daniels, has officially transferred to West Virginia. And in today's video, I am going to be talking about JT Daniels' career up to this point and talk about what it means for him to be at West Virginia and how West Virginia could be in the 2022 college football season. Now, before I move on with the video, remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, as we are on the road to 10K. Now, let's get into it. To start the video off, I'm going to kick it back all the way to his high school days at Modern Day, where JT Daniels really started to make a name for himself. Everybody knows that Modern Day is one of the best high school football programs in the nation. And they play against some of the toughest competition as well. And JT Daniels, he was not a starter immediately for Modern Day, but he would see some very early playing time. As Modern Day's starting quarterback in the first game that JT Daniels was there as a backup quarterback, would actually end up getting injured. And that's when the JT Daniels season started off at Modern Day. And from there, he was the starting quarterback for the rest of his time. In his high school football career at Modern Day, JT Daniels threw for 12,014 yards, 152 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions in only three seasons. His best season was his final year at Modern Day as a junior, where he straight up was unstoppable, and so was Modern Day as a team as he threw for 4,123 yards, had 61 total touchdowns, 52 through the air, 9 on the ground, leading them to a 15-0 record and a high school national championship. Modern Day also never was trailing in any game they played in that season, and they won every game by at least 10 points. As well in that junior campaign of JT Daniels, he was the USA Today all USA High School football team member, Glenn Davis Award recipient, Max Preps Football Player of the Year, and Gatorade Football Player of the Year. You may be wondering, why did JT Daniels only play three seasons of high school football at modern day if he was starting as a true freshman? What happened to his last season at modern day? Did he get injured? Well, that's not the case at all. As JT Daniels would forgo his final year of high school eligibility, reclassifying from the 2019 recruiting class to the 2018 recruiting class so he could play at USC earlier. When talking about JT Daniels as a recruit, he was seen as one of the top players in his class ever since his freshman year at Modern Day, and rightfully so. This guy was putting on a show at one of the best high schools in the nation for football. As a recruit according to the 24-7 Sports Composite Rankings, for the 2018 recruiting class, he ranked as a 5-star recruit, the number 16 player in the nation, and the number 2 pro-style quarterback in that class. He held a total of 18 Division I offers coming out of high school from schools such as USC, LSU, Alabama, Miami, Michigan, and Notre Dame, just to name a few, and he would end up going to USC. JT Daniels had a lot of hype heading into his freshman year at USC. He was a five-star player, highly touted, and he led the number one high school team in the nation to a 15-0 record. He would end up enrolling at USC in June, and despite missing spring ball, he would be in the thick of it before the season in a three-way quarterback battle, but he would come out on top and was named as the starting quarterback for USC Week 1. In his true freshman campaign at USC, he would only miss one game for them, and he started in 11. He would end up having a pretty solid season, even though the season itself for USC as a team was forgettable as they went 5-7. And, and although JT Daniels' numbers may have not been as good as some people may have wanted, you do have to take into account that the guy was supposed to be a high school senior and not a true freshman starting quarterback. But in his true freshman campaign, he completed 59.5% of his passes, threw for 2,672 yards, 14 touchdown passes through the air, and 10 interceptions. Year 2 at USC in the 2019 season was supposed to be a breakout year for JT Daniels, 
but it would end up ending very early as he tore his ACL in the first game versus Fresno State. In that one half he pretty much played in, he completed almost 74% of his passes to for 215 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. That game that he tore his ACL versus Fresno State in the season opener for the 2019 season would be the last ever game that JT Daniels would play at USC, as during that 2019 campaign, Keaton Slovis would break out as the quarterback at USC, and JT Daniels would officially enter his name into the transfer portal, where he would then end up at Georgia. JT Daniels, when he first got to Georgia, had a lot of high expectations, as many people thought he was going to be the starting quarterback immediately, once Jamie Newman opted out of the 2020 campaign. But that was not the case, however, as JT Daniels actually started off as a backup quarterback. He would end up playing in four games and starting in four games, and he went 4-0 as a starting quarterback and played very well, as he completed 67% of his passes, threw for 1,231 yards, 10 touchdowns, and only two interceptions. After a stellar finish in the 2020 campaign, JT Daniels had some real hype around his name heading into 2021, as he was viewed as a top quarterback in college football, someone who might win the Heisman, and was seen as somebody that would be a first round pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. And it wasn't just him, the team had a lot of hype as well, as a team that was going to potentially be in the playoffs and win it all. Unfortunately for JT Daniels, 2021 wouldn't be the season that everyone was actually expecting out of him. But honestly, it was out of his control. He would end up playing in five games and starting in three of them, and he played well, as he completed 72% of his passes, threw for 722 yards, seven touchdowns, and three interceptions. It's not as eye-popping as the previous season, but he was playing well. He would end up getting hurt early on in the season, which led to Stetson Bennett taking on the quarterback one duties. And although JT Daniels wasn't actually out that long with injury, when he came back, he wasn't the starting quarterback. It was Stetson Bennett, and Stetson Bennett remained the starting quarterback for the rest of the season. Georgia would go on to win the national title game, and after that game, JT Daniels would end up entering the transfer portal for the second time in his career. While being in the transfer portal for the second time, JT Daniels was down to three schools, Oregon State, Missouri, and West Virginia. Out of those schools, he would end up choosing West Virginia, where he will be playing for them in 2022. Now that you know more about JT Daniels and his career and how he got to West Virginia up to this point, I'm going to be talking about JT Daniels and West Virginia to finish off this video. West Virginia is coming off a 2021 season in which they went 6-7, and seven, made a guaranteed rate bowl appearance, and lost 18-6. Now, a big problem with West Virginia as a team last year was the quarterback position, as Jared Day, he had some bad games, and the offense ranked 88th in scoring, averaging 25 points a game. Now, the defense wasn't honestly that bad. They had their low moments, but they also had their high moments as well. Their defense is actually a pretty decent defense. But a big problem with them last year was honestly inconsistent quarterback play. And heading into 2022 before they got JT Daniels, they were honestly in a tough spot as the next starting quarterback for West Virginia was going to be someone that has yet to really have any real quarterback college football experience. With JT Daniels joining West Virginia to be their quarterback one, you just have to assume it at that point since he has the most experience and a pretty good track record up to this point. You can guarantee that West Virginia is going to be a better team than last season, despite losing some key starters on both sides of the football. They're still going to be a better team than last year, as JT Daniels is a much better quarterback than Jared Dahey. Now, of course, JT Daniels has had some injury issues while in college, but as a quarterback, he's been pretty good. Talking about West Virginia in 2022 with JT Daniels, like I said, I do believe they're going to be a lot better, 
but I do not necessarily think that they're going to win the Big 12 or even get to the Big 12 title game. I do think the Big 12 is improving as a conference and it's going to be pretty balanced next season from up and down as honestly there isn't going to be just that one top heavy team that everybody knows is just going to win it. But I could see West Virginia being an 8-4 to 9-3 team depending on JT Daniels health and the health of the team period. Well guys, if you made it this far in the video, drop something down in the comment section below. How do you think JT Daniels will do at West Virginia? And how do you think West Virginia will be in 2022? And before you head out, remember to smash that like button, turn on those post notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. Be Kelly out.